Salutations crustaceans, I'm Lobster and today we're going to be reviewing my GNL L1000 CLF. Let's do this. This is my GNL L1000 CLF and this is one of my favorite basses. This is such a cool instrument. It's a modern recreation of the original GNL bass, the L1000. Now you may be looking at the whole aesthetic and control setup and be thinking this is a kind of Stingray-ish copy, but no, you are gravely mistaken. This is taking the Stingray formula to a completely different place. And this is one of Leo Fender's final masterpieces. This one, as I mentioned, is a more modern recreation with a more modern six bolt neck attachment versus the original three for additional stability. But this largely follows the same formula as the original L1000. Featuring an ash body, at least on this one, however, an Acoma body is featured on some of the other finishes. Um, you can find more on the website linked below, the GNL official website, and it'll tell you which one's paired with which. This base also has a maple neck with a maple fretboard and a Stingray-ish neck profile at a 41.3 millimeter nut width. The neck is a 21 fret, 34 inch scale neck, very comfortable, and it is finished in a gloss all around. So this isn't a natural satin finish, this is a gloss finish. Some people like gloss, some people don't. I personally don't mind it on this bass at all. It's very comfortable and very easy to play. The pickup is GNL's in-house powerhouse, the MFD. This is the same type of pickup that we saw featured in the GNL Fallout. And man, this thing has some kick. And this is paired with the L1000 circuit, which is a volume, high cut, or regular tone control, and low cut. It's very interesting how this is wired, and you also have a three-way switch here for three different pickup voicings. You have parallel, you have a single coil mode, which is called split coil, but I believe they call that because you're splitting it and only using one of the coils. And then you have OMG mode, which is series, except a capacitor is run through one of the uh, pickup banks, making it very interesting and very bottom heavy. This is all passive. This is 100% passive, and you essentially have a two-band EQ here, plus the three-way uh, switch here with the OMG mode. This has a ton of usable voicings, and the pickup isn't located in the Stingray sweet spot, but it's moved up north towards where a P-Bass pickup is. So you have a much fatter tone as opposed to the Stingray, which is a much, I guess, sharper, more like slice-through-the-mix kind of tone. This is just going to pummel its way through. Uh, this is a beastly bass. The Stingray relies on a more low power pickup wired in parallel and leverages the active preamp to get its kick. This is using a beefy pickup and then just allowing you to cut either the treble or the bass with these two separate controls here. As for the rest of the hardware, the tuners as well as the bridge are GNL's in-house uh, hardware and they are high quality. This is also the same type of hardware that you get in the Tribute series. And that is pretty cool that they're able to leverage their high quality hardware even on their import line. However, this bass is made in America. Now, let's go ahead and turn this bass around real quick. As you can see, there's not much to see back here other than the beautiful ash grain, the six bolt neck attachment or six screw neck attachment, and this beautiful maple neck. I believe this is a quarter ston maple neck and it is beautiful. You have no control cavities and no battery compartments because again, 100% passive. Now I know you guys are wondering, what does this bass sound like? You guys know what you need to do. Go ahead and pinch that like button so my hand will turn back to normal. Thanks. Thank you. 
So that was the pickup in parallel with both tone controls at 100%. So nothing is being cut here. We have maximum treble and maximum bass going on. This is an awesome sounding bass. Again, that was with the pickup in parallel. Here's what this sounds like in single coil. You get a little bit of noise. You do get a little bit of single coil hum. There is no phantom coil in here. So single coil mode or split coil is just a single coil, but you do get a lot of really nice clarity. So here's what this sounds like. Again, nothing cut on the tone controls. Nice, very nice. And finally, here's OMG mode. So because there is a capacitor being run through one of the banks of magnets, uh, I forget which one it is. Actually, here's a little test. So here's a little Allen wrench. In parallel, I'll tap the front bank of magnets as well as the back. You'll hear a tap in both. Yep. Here's single coil mode. You notice one was louder. The front bank of magnets is not active, so you don't really get any sort of uh, signal picked up from those. And then finally, OMG mode, you're gonna hear something very interesting. You hear that the front bank of magnets is a bit muffled, so a capacitor is actually being run through that, and therefore the humbucking or the hum canceling within the pickup is actually kind of reduced. So it's running in, in sort of a boosted single coil mode. It's very interesting. Uh, here's what that sounds like. So OMG mode definitely has some meat to it. Again, that's running in series with a capacitor going through one of the banks of magnets. That gives it a lot of low end, a lot, and can easily overwhelm smaller amps. So use OMG mode with caution, just like in that uh, G&L Fallout, which I reviewed earlier. Now let's go ahead and set the pickup back to parallel and let's play with these controls a little bit. So the first control that we have here next to the volume control is our typical tone knob, a treble cut. So here's what it sounds like all the way off with the pickup in parallel. Now let's turn the tone down all the way. So that's what that does. Let's go ahead and turn that up and play with the second control. This is going to cut the bass or the low end, only leaving the mids and highs. So again, so again, here's everything at 100%. And then, here's the bass cut. So what I just showed you were the extremes and you can really mix and match and blend these controls to get some interesting tones. One particular tone that I think this bass nails is, uh, let me just show you. So that was in single coil mode with the bass cut about 50% and the treble all the way open. It really gets that just like gnarly rock, classic rock tone that I love. And this bass just has so much rock soul and it's just awesome. But you can also be sensitive. Let's have the pickup in OMG mode, the bass with 50% cut and the treble 100% cut. Thank you. 
So yeah, this bass is very flexible. You can really play with these controls and tailor your tone without having to worry about a 9 volt battery running out. You can leave this plugged in and just not have to worry. So this is a really great innovation from Leo Fender, especially coming out of the active electronics phase when he was building the Stingrays, which were an active bass, which required a battery. So being able to have very similar uh, tone shaping capabilities without a battery is a really awesome feat. Now let's turn the controls back all the way up, go back to parallel, and I will go ahead and slap this thing in all three different pickup modes. That was parallel, your single coil. Finally, OMG. <laughs> Gotta be careful there. <laughs> and finally, let's go ahead and throw some drums behind this bass. <laughs> So here are my final thoughts on the G&L L1000 CLF from G&L USA. This is an awesome instrument. This is just a fun, awesome bass that has many purposes, can fill many shoes, but is really there to rock. And this thing just rules. I love it. These are going to be made in limited quantities from what I understand. So if you like what you hear, be sure to grab one. They're not going to be around forever. Now I'm not sponsored by GNL. They're not paying me to make this video. I bought this bass with my own money direct from Fret Nation. So thanks Jason over at Fret Nation for giving me a great deal on this bass. However, I have no affiliation with GNL and I can absolutely recommend this bass for someone who wants a absolute rock monster, but can actually fill many shoes. The passive electronic setup is especially innovative, even for modern standards. This thing is awesome and super flexible. And that combined with the three-way selector switch gives you a ton of different pickup voices. And you can fill a lot of different roles with this. Now, one thing I do wish they included was a phantom coil in the pickup to allow for hum canceling in single coil mode, like we have in the Ernie Ball Music Man Sterling. That's the USA Sterling, not the Sterling by Music Man brand. Completely separate things. Uh, that was after uh, Leo Fender's uh, departure from Music Man, so there's no real affiliation with that technology. However, I do wish some sort of phantom coil was employed to reduce hum in the single coil modes and OMG modes. Uh, that being said, this is a great sounding bass. This thing sounds awesome, has a lot of character, a lot of history, and it looks great, it sounds great, and it's actually priced very competitively as well. Most USA made instruments are around the $2,000 and above mark. Stingrays are around $2,300. Uh, fenders are around $1,600 and up with the Ultras being over $2,000. This bass is priced around $1,600, I believe uh, the brand new price. And they are well priced in my opinion for a handmade USA made iconic bass like this. 
This is one of Leo Fender's unsung heroes. We all hear about the P-Bass, we all hear about the Stingray, but this thing is definitely worthy of recognition as well. So what am I going to rate? The GNL L1000 CLF? Ugh. I'm going to go ahead and rate this bass. I'm going to go ahead and rate this 5 out of 5. It's not perfect, and 5 out of 5 isn't meant to be perfect, but this is greater than the sum of its parts here. It has a lot of historical mojo, it is well constructed, it is thoughtfully constructed, the electronics are innovative and flexible, especially for a single pickup bass, and on top of that, it just has so much mojo. And I, I love the headstock as well, I just forgot to mention that. I love this old school headstock over the modern GNL headstock, so this thing definitely does it for me. Though it may be lacking stainless steel frets and perhaps some hum cancelling for the single coil mode, outside of that though, for the price, you are getting a great USA made bass here and a great value. Again, most other USA made instruments are much more expensive than this brand new, so I am very satisfied with this purchase and this has a permanent place in my stable. Well, that's it for this video. Thanks for watching everyone. Be sure to like, subscribe, join our Discord, and Leave a comment down below and let me know what you think about my GNL L1000 CLF. And as always, until we groove again.